Welcome in the third episode of the World Spy Game Tutorial series. Today we will start to implement our board data so we will be able to create the puzzles for different categories. If you did not subscribe to this channel yet, please consider to do so. You can hit the subscribe button down below and turn on notification so you will not miss any future videos I release. Ok, so let's get started with our implementation. Let's open Unity. And last time we have created our main menu scene. So now let's go to the scripts folder. And we need to create two classes. So first one will be the game utility. So right click create C sharp script. And I will call it game utility. So this is the first class. And then, and then let's create another one. So right click create and this one, first of all, we're going to create the folder and I will call this folder scriptable object. OK, let's go inside that folder and then right click create C sharp script and I will call it board data. OK, now we can open our scripts in the Visual Studio. So here it is, our our two classes we, we added. So let's first of all open our game utility class. And this is going to be very simple implementation. For now, this is going to be the, like small function which we will use in the editor. So we can delete the, the start and the update method. And for now, we just need to one function in this class. So let's add it. I will put public void. load scene and this will be we need to pass the string scene name and we need to call the scene manager but in, or, in order to do that we need to put using statement so right at the top I will put using unity engine dot scene management and now we can go back to function and put scene manager dot load scene and we can pass our scene name okay so that's it let's save this class and that's it for this implementation for now this is the function we will need to switch this diff to different scenes in the editor so now let's go back to the board data class and this class will hold the data for our boards for our puzzles and we need to change a few things here so the first one will be, we, w we don't want to inherit from the mono behavior. We're going to create a scriptable object, which is the data object, which you can create in your editor. And it's mainly purpose is to hold the data for our game. So let's inherit from the scriptable object. Scriptable object. OK. Now we can delete our start and the update function because we will not need it for the scriptable object and now when you save it so the next um, thing we will have to add is right above this class the first one will be let's open some uh, square bases put system dot ser serializable and another one will be create create menu asset okay so now when you save everything and if you go back to Unity, after you added this create asset menu, you will see that if you right click in the editor, you will be able to go to the create and then you will see the board data. So you, you now you can now create the board data, the data for, for your game. Okay, so this object is currently empty, but we will add some field in it and we're going to create the custom editor to display our data. So let's remove this data we created and then let's go back to Unity again. OK, so inside this class, I will add two different classes. So let's put the first thing will be system dot serializable and right below I will put public class searching word. And the searching word will hold just one field, which will be public string 
word. Okay, let's let's add another class. Public class board row, and uh, this class need to have the system dot serializable, and this class will hold two fields, which will be public int size, and then public int and public string and this is going to be the array and this is going to be row okay so let's add a few different function first function we will add the default constructor so public make sure you get the name of the class open braces and then close braces and then i will just create the empty constructor Okay, so let's duplicate this line and we need to, we're gonna overload the constructor and I will pass the size, so int size. And then let's put the function name, name. create row and we're gonna pass the size. Let's uh, create this function. So right below, I will, I will put public void create row and we will accept the integer size and in this function we simply gonna call size will be equal to size and then the row will be equal to new new string of the size size okay and, and after that, we're gonna clear our row with the with the zero data. So I will just call function clear row. Okay, we don't have this function yet, so let's let's just implement it down below. So public void clear row, and this clear row function will just have a simple loop. So for int i equals zero, i is less than size, and then i plus plus. So our row at i will be equal to empty string. Okay, so this is simple class, have uh, some helper functions. So now right below this class, so I just call up this class for now. Let's add some uh, some variable to our to our board data. Let's add public float time in seconds. So this is how much time we will have inside our game to solve the puzzles. And if this time can be different for different different uh, puzzles we create we create in our game. So another will be public int columns will be equal to zero and then public int rows will be equal to zero and down below we need to create the public board row and there's gonna be uh, the array and I will call it board okay and now we need to two helper function so public void clear with empty string let's loop so for int i equals zero i is less than the columns i plus plus and we will call board at i dot clear row okay so we just simple calling the function we implemented inside our board row class which is set string to be empty. There's another function we need to add to this class and it's gonna be the last function. It's gonna be public void create new board. And this function will call board will be equal to new board row 
of size of the columns. And then for int i equals zero, i is less than the columns, i plus plus, we need to get the board at i will be equal to new board row and we need to pass the size which is the rows okay so make sure you have this function created because this is going to allocate some memory for our data and this uh, as you see i'm using the new operator to do that so we have our data class now let's switch back to unity and see what we get Okay, so I will go to our resources folder and then right click inside this folder, create folder and I will call this folder puzzles. Uh, actually, let's call it data and then go inside the data folder, right click, create folder puzzles. Okay, and inside our puzzles folder, I will just right click, create and then board data. And I will call it puzzle one. So as you see, when you select this object now, you have some some field which we which we created, and then you have the size of the board. So if you set the size, any of the size, currently your array is displayed is displayed this way. So we don't want to have this uh, this array to be displayed like that. We want to have like a small squares where we will be able to put our letters and then use it to actually uh, inside the game to display the correct graphics. So this is uh, what we're going to do in the next episode. We, in the next episode, we will start to implement our custom editor to display the, the proper way how this data should be presented inside the editor. So it will be much easier for us to generate the data, different data for different puzzles. So I think uh, that's it for this episode. Just make sure you have you go to the file and then save everything. So we have our base, basis for, for board data implemented. So thank you very much for watching and see you again in the next episode.